Hi, I'm Matt Smith, and this is the first video I'm posting to a new channel called Spark Spread. Today we're going to be talking about a potentially overlooked catalyst for Tesla's margin, and that is used vehicle sales with full self-driving attached. But since this is my first video, I thought we'd take a minute and talk about where I want this channel to go, some of the content that I'd like to cover, and a little bit about my own background. I'm a Tesla investor and enthusiast who happens to work in the energy industry. In my opinion, energy is the most misunderstood aspect of Tesla's future growth. There is a lot more nuance in how Tesla can grow, and even how they legally cannot grow, in some areas of the energy industry. And so I'd like to build up a little bit of that framework for viewers, and also hypothesize a bit about how I think Tesla is most likely to address different areas of the energy industry. I also have a background in investment banking and valuation, so I want to use those experiences to shed light on Tesla as an investment. One thing I'm very excited to share is a discounted cash flow model I've been working on where I take each aspect of Tesla's business, which in my opinion is automotive hardware, full self-driving, autonomy, so robo-taxis, energy hardware, and energy as a service, and value those business lines on a standalone dollar per share basis. This involves modeling out the business over the next 10 years, and while there is inherently a large amount of uncertainty when looking out that far, I think this will be a helpful exercise to get Tesla investors thinking about what the company could look like longer term. I believe this is more necessary now than ever with Tesla at a roughly $400 billion valuation and many commentators declaring without thought that Tesla must be overvalued. So I have a lot of other topics I'd like to dive into, but without further ado, let's get into Tesla's used vehicle sales with full self-driving. So this website, for those of you who haven't seen it before, is ev-cpo.com. It has a real-time listing of every Tesla vehicle listed for sale worldwide, which you can sort a ton of different ways. If you looked at used Model 3s, you can see there are 132 available for sale in the United States. So if we click on that, we now have a listing of all used Model 3s, which we can further sort by feature set. I was looking at this the other day and wondered how many of the used vehicles available for sale had FSD. If it was a truly random representation, you would expect only 25% or so to have this feature, since that would be consistent with the historic take rate at the time of sale. So if we apply this filter, we instead see that fully 131 of the available used Model 3s for sale in the United States have FSD attached, so over 99%. I did a similar test with the models S and X and found that around 80% of those vehicles had FSD attached. I also spot checked these results on the Tesla website to verify the results and indeed it is nearly impossible to find a used Model 3 without full self-driving. It seems to me that Tesla likely has so much demand for its used vehicles relative to available supply that it can essentially force you to opt for FSD on used sales and collect all that extra margin relative to a trade-in which may not have even had full self-driving with the original owner. So, as I am wont to do, I took a stab at quantifying what this benefit might look like for Tesla. I put out a call on Twitter for users to send me recent trade-in offers they've received from Tesla. The most recent offer I heard about was this $48,700 offer Tesla made for a Twitter user's fully loaded Model 3 performance which had 5,000 miles. The vehicle had full self-driving attached, so unfortunately I can't see what the offer for a vehicle without full self-driving has been. If any viewers have received an offer in the last month or so from Tesla for a used vehicle without full self-driving, please let me know. Nevertheless, we can compare that offer to a comparable vehicle from Tesla's inventory to get an idea of Tesla's margin on used vehicle sales. As you can see, the comparable vehicle has a list price of about $58,000. We can use this data to get an estimate of Tesla's margins on used vehicle sales. As you can see here, I'm taking Tesla's list price and subtracting out their offer price to try to get their margin on the sale. What I'm trying to do with this particular exercise is to isolate their margin which is derived solely from attaching full self-driving to vehicles which did not have it originally. So I'm making an adjustment or essentially lowering the offer price Tesla would make to someone selling the vehicle without FSD. I've assumed here that Tesla's offer would have been $4,000 lower had this been sold without FSD. Finally, Tesla will have some transportation costs, cleaning, maintenance, checkups, etc. 
that they need to perform before ultimately delivering that vehicle to the second buyer. So I've conservatively subtracted $5,000 to account for those costs. So that leaves us with $8,700 for the Tesla resale with full self-driving attached. Now let's try to quantify the impact of this trend on Tesla's Q3 earnings. We have to make some assumptions on quantity and I try to do that by laying out each step. Starting with the assumption that Tesla will sell 143,000 new vehicles, it's fair to assume a certain percentage of those sales will be from current Tesla owners who are upgrading to a newer or different Tesla vehicle. I've not been able to find out any reliable information or current information on sources for this, so I've assumed 10% of new sales would fall into that category. That gives Tesla 14,300 vehicles, uh, about three quarters of which would be traded in without FSD. So this gives us over 10,000 vehicles with a margin potential of about $90 million. So to give some reference on the scale of this potential margin catalyst, let's briefly look at Tesla's overall level of profitability. So in Q2, the company posted gap net income of $104 million. And in Q3, my expectation is that Tesla will post earnings of over $420 million. So in this context, the potential benefit we're calculating of around $90 million, which is pre-tax, so the net after tax amount would be a bit lower than that. But still around $90 million, it's material, but certainly there are other more significant factors at play in Q3. Now, I've been watching this site for a while, and from what I can recall, this practice of attaching FSD to effectively all used vehicles is a relatively new phenomenon. I believe this could be a hidden catalyst for margin in Q3 and beyond. In fact, what gets me really excited is thinking about the vehicles Tesla will be getting in the future, which are coming off lease. Tesla introduced the Model 3 lease in Q2 of 2019, so I think in about a year and a half, or Q2 of 2022, we'll start seeing an even larger opportunity than what I've laid out here in the current period. Tesla at that point will be recapturing some more margin from vehicles it has already produced by taking advantage of Tesla's high residual value, adding on FSD for those vehicles which did not already have it, or best of all, by incorporating them into the robo-taxi fleet. So that does it for today's video. If you did find this interesting, please hit like and subscribe or pass it on to a friend, and I'll see you next time on Spark Spread. Thank you.